Having the ability to access the most powerful version of yourself is sometimes intimidating. Stepping up and bringing forth that powerful inner energy and directing it can help you embrace the life that you've always dreamed of. My guest today, Melissa Keenan, is the go-to intuitive intimacy expert for the top 1% who helps high-powered female CEOs use their feminine energy as a 10-time growth strategy. She is CEO, a keynote speaker, and an international and USA Today best-selling author. After investing nearly 200K in certifications and training, plus overcoming traumatic relationship experiences, Melissa understands the female CEO feeling trapped in the masculine. She helps her gain time, freedom, intimacy, and fulfillment without losing momentum. Melissa also enjoys dancing, singing, working, and praying at her hobby ranch in Northern Nevada, where she lives with her husband, CJ, and their four children. Let's join the conversation now. Welcome, Melissa. I am super excited that you're here today and welcome. Thank you. So I really feel like there's a a dive deep into, let's talk about empowering yourself and people in the business that they're at today, because we're in this place where everything's kind of still up in the air, unfolding. What does it look like for each person? And really stepping into their feminine energy, intimacy, and that sensuality that you bring out so beautifully in your clients. So I'd like to start there, and I would love for you to share with my listeners how you access this in your life for your journey and what you work with your clients. Um, Okay, that's a loaded question. (laughs) (laughs) The loaded gun, Melissa, let's just boom, the loaded gun. (laughs) You know what I've been thinking about this morning? This is kind of uh, funny, but tied to what you're asking, Um, I keep, I have the song stuck in my head. Do you love me from Fiddler on the Roof? Oh, yes. You know that, do you know that mm-hmm, movie mm-hmm. and play and all that? I just love it. I want to see it live so, so badly. That's a, a goal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, it's funny because even in their super traditional lifestyle that it highlights, the um the nature of their relationship was really masculine energy mm-hmm. it's like you know arranged marriages they didn't choose they didn't get to consult their heart they and so there's that just sweet moment where um the husband is like yeah but do you love me and then she fills in with all these tasks these masculine energy tasks that she has done for him their whole lives and it's just so sweet yeah but do you love me and i think um you know i think that that whole show highlights the change in society and the change in a culture and a religion and all of that but it it's very um applicable to us today so where you're saying even in our our business and our and our careers um it's almost like the world is asking yeah but do you love it and and even in our marriages and yet do you love it and are you doing the things you love or are you just doing the things because it's the things you were thought you were supposed to be doing in uh it feels like even you know since covid um and it kind of jarred people into this sense of wait a minute do i even like what i'm doing do i even like who i am um and i see this really often so i primarily work with high level business owners um the top two percent and I see this a lot with them too. Am I doing the things that I love or am I just doing the things? Um, is my is my um, inner compass directing me towards things that are actually gonna create a fulfilled life? Or am I, have, have I shifted my inner compass over here just to increase the bottom line and just to do the next right steps to grow my business? So, um, so then to answer your next question, uh, which I think was, how do we then access this? How do I access this for myself? Is that what you said? Yeah. I asked you if you could share your journey of how you got to where you're at right now Mm -hmm. and assisting others on their journeys. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think my journey started, um, even before I was born, 
my um my ancestry is just full of pain and heartache and people who were very confused um and hurting and acting out in pain and so the women in my ancestry were um you know very oppressed and um very disempowered but it's funny the men the men were the persecutors but i think they were also very oppressed in a different way mm -hmm. and hurting and confused and so and so i was born into this really chaotic um atmosphere where christianity was like the insurance like maybe if we can just do this christian thing and do it really really well then we will um eventually <laughs> figure it out uh you know which i just think is so so sad I, I and i love christ um i feel like i can talk about all these things on your show because it's definitely spiritual, spirituality but i love christ and i'm i actually do have a religion that i um subscribe to i'm a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints but um but i think jesus must be looking at a lot of us and thinking you're making this so hard and you've twisted this so so different from what I ever intended it to be you know so I was born into that and had a very difficult childhood um, drugs and abuse and addiction and um, violence you know calling the cops on my parents and um, and then my, uh, adultery and uh, um, Eventually, my parents divorced, and then my mom, uh, my mom moved out. My dad was given full custody of me, and just shortly after that, he was diagnosed with cancer and had three months left to live, and died three months later. Um, and so I went and moved in then with my aunt and uncle, and um, really, you know, because. W having those kinds of experiences so young i was just constantly being asked like by the universe like what do you believe what do you stand for and i was constantly brought to these positions of being very abandoned and neglected and alone which had me asking like what where is the hope and in that aloneness finding hope like i wasn't really ever alone and so that it formed the whole foundation for my spiritual um, seeking and spiritual journey. Uh, fast forward, I was about 18 and I joined the church um, that I now am a member of and and it helped me open up my heart again to the idea of family. I really did not want a family, which probably hindsight's just didn't want to continue to repeat everything that I had experienced. And, um, and instead in, in the Mormon faith, you know, family is super integral and the teachings on family are so beautiful. It just opened my heart. And so instead I jumped in with both feet and um, by 25 had three kids ages four and under all in diapers. And, um, and then my husband came to me and let me know that he had had a secret addiction our entire marriage literally that i was blind to and um, i asked him to move out we were separated for six months so during that six months i was like um i repeated exactly what i didn't want to have happen in my life that was where i was it was uh, i was diagnosed with ptsd it was so intense um just thinking where did i go wrong and how could i be back in this situation and feeling so alone again and abandoned and neglected and betrayed. And now I have three little kids looking up to me trying to, um, you know, that I've got to have answers for. And I had no answers. And it was in that place that I really um, gained a new conviction that I was going to create happiness and fullness for myself and for my life regardless of what anyone else around me did. And um, and so that began my true personal development journey. And it was so shocking to me because as most kids, when you go through horrible things in your childhood, you assume it's your fault. 
So I had approached everything up to that point from a space of like, I'm broken. I have to really fix myself in order to like survive this life. And it was so shocking to me that from that place of like total surrender, I was continually shown that I was wonderful and that the answers could be found within me. And how else was I going to hear God's voice besides by loving this vessel that I get the answers through? And um, so ended up going through my own eating disorder recovery and just waking up so much to the beauty of life and my own spiritual gifts. And my husband also chose to work really hard on himself and found recovery. And um, and so we came back together and it took probably another two years before we really knew that we had made the right choice by staying together. It was so hard. So often we would have we would say like, I think it would have been easier if we'd just gotten divorced. Um, in so many ways, because we had to rebuild a marriage with a new foundation, but with the same person, the one who had hurt you, who had lied, who had, and then I was able to see my part. I had been, become so micromanaging and controlling and perfectionistic um, because of my, my experience of my younger life. So, so coming back together from that and building from a new foundation was very hard, but I remember looking at him one day and just feeling like, oh my gosh, like I feel so connected to this other human being and I feel so full and connected to myself. And I finally feel like I understand like my role as a mother too. And it was like, I didn't know that intimacy and family and connection could feel like this. I had never seen it modeled before. And my husband said the same thing, like, oh my gosh, we didn't even know what we were trying to create. We just knew it had to be better than what we were experiencing. And when we were experiencing, it was like, we didn't know it could be this great. And that's where my conviction came to start working with women and couples and individuals around intimacy. So, you know, certifications and et cetera, later, here I am. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for sharing all of that, Melissa. What a journey. And it seems to me that you were definitely breaking a lot of that lineage and a lot of that old stuff for your the generations to come, your children, your grandchildren to come. And what a beautiful journey. Thank you. And also staying with the man and the person, the soul connection that you have come to really work with. Because oftentimes, like you said, I mean, I really believe that we all have connections with one another. And there are times when we do stay together and there are times when we go our separate ways. And, but working through and having that beautiful foundation for your children, again, for the future generations, and working through things, what a, I mean, what a gift, definitely. I'm I'm so grateful. Like, I'm just so grateful, and and I feel like part of why our intimacy is so strong, um, and this is a part that we can only catalyze a little bit for the couples that we work with, and for the individuals I work with. Yeah, because it has to really come from within, but it was because we really witnessed each other's darkness and we found like a love and acceptance in the midst of that, even parts of us that had really hurt each other. It was, it's not the same thing as just laying over and being a doormat and like letting somebody abuse you, but it's, it's this like mutual, like honoring of the human and the soul that you have said yes to. And then um, and then both of us honoring ourselves that uh, that just continues to bless us. It's like we I think in the beginning we thought we were trying to um, just recreate the joy that we had when we first got married because we were so smitten, you know, but we were also in college and completely naive. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. But, but to come to this place of like full um, transparency, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we we got a, a client right now uh, we've been working with for some time. And and just now he has shared he had a secret that he was going to take to his grave that wasn't even about this current wife, this couple that we're working with. It was about a previous relationship. And he finally has unburdened himself of this thing and gone and made amends with those involved. And now his relationship with his wife is like 
night and day 360 difference. And I just don't think people realize how much, like when we feel like we have to hide stuff, how much that um, takes us away from our center. So, uh, so coming to that place of like fully seeing and knowing each other just absolutely makes all the difference in the world. Without a doubt. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about true intimacy because you call it into me see. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I think often people hear the word intimacy and they just automatically think sex. Mm -hmm. And sex is one aspect of intimacy, physical intimacy. Um, But it is this into me see. And I think it's we don't talk about it enough. And and it's uh, that's damaging so much so that I often get people for one, usually the word intimacy scares people. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking like, when you're feeling kind of tight, it's actually more normal for the collective than not. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we don't talk about it very much, we don't really label like what it is or what it feels like or when we're experiencing it, we don't even necessarily know when we've got it mm-hmm. um, or what it is that we might work toward. Uh, it really is that closeness. It involves that vulnerability. Um, It's a connection and it happens on many layers, emotionally, yes, physically, spiritually even. I I look at the world through the lens of intimacy. So in, in my world, everything is a relationship and I'm in relationship with everything. So I can be experiencing intimacy with my house plants or with the dirt outside or with the stars, with my children, with my husband, with my friends, with my clients, with my team. Um, or I can be in all of those situations and experiencing no intimacy at all. And it's simply a matter of me deciding to be in that open space. And, um, and and the other thing that I would say about that is that we can't ever experience true intimacy without first having safety and trust. So uh, usually when we think of safety and trust, we think that our external environment has to create that. And while we definitely need that, it's less dependent on that than we give that credit. It's really more an internal safety and trust. So that's why intimacy with myself is like first priority. Can I be with my emotions or do I run from them? Can I be with the decisions I've made? Can I understand myself? Can I understand my relation to the things that have happened in my life? Um, Do I like who I'm being as a business owner? Do I like who I'm being in my relationships? That's intimacy with yourself first. And we're really only able to experience um, that kind of depth of intimacy with another to the level at which we've gone with ourselves. And oftentimes, especially women, um, the women that I I work with and talk to on a regular basis will say like, um, I just I feel like people only appreciate me for what I can do for them. Right. That's a very um, common feeling in our current society, the way that things run. I I just feel like people don't really see me. They don't really know me. They only appreciate me for what I can do for them, whether that's a spouse or it's in business um, or in the world at large. And typically this is this is because do you see you if you want people to deeply see you to hear you to know you and to appreciate you for simply who you're being you have to be able to show them your beingness rather than just only showing them what you can do and that starts by you seeing you and i think that's where like you mentioned earlier, how things have broken us up open since COVID and that that's where people are stepping into or moving into because the outer is not supporting the inner, like that beautiful mirror. It's, I mean, I feel too, that like all that's going on in the outer world and all the chaos and craziness, et cetera, which honestly is always going on in different levels, in different scenarios, but it, that's a reflection of how people are feeling inside. So like you're mentioning, when you really get in tune with yourself and that intimacy of 
who you are as a soul, a spirit, a loving being, then the outer changes. And I just, I, I really have complete hope for humanity. I believe that we are moving that way. There are so many of us on the planet now that are really emphasizing and sharing with people how to embrace this intimacy, how to embrace love, the Christ, you know, energy, everything. And like, just bringing that collectively into what we're here to do and, and be right now. And, but being in tune with yourself, like you mentioned, and, you know, is really key. And the more that people can hear this information and, and work with, you know, beautiful souls like you and what you're doing helps them move forward. So I want to bring this conversation into work because we've talked about ourselves, about being intimate, about, you know, being in tune with ourselves. So now I'd like you to share a little bit about how that affects the business that people are in and what they're offering the world. This is so huge. Um, and I'm going to make an assumption that your listeners probably are on board with some version of this sort of mentality around what's happening in our world right now, which mm -hmm. is we are shifting to a more feminine or Aquarian age. Mm -hmm. And there is a great awakening happening. And so if you look right now in the business world, um, really in our world at large, who are those who are super important? And what were the steps that it took them? How did they get to be a super important person? Air quotes. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's not because of their integrity. It's not because of the core of who they are. It's not, we don't really know what's on their insides, right? Um, and I believe that because of this shift we're experiencing in society, there will come a time when our insides will be more apparent to all of us because we're all waking up to those spiritual gifts and we're all getting more in tune with our intuition. And we're gonna see right through these people who have uh, only self-interest uh, involved, right? So if we're going to continue to run our business and think that bro marketing in this masculine energy way of um, simply being transactional with people, um, you know, not really letting um, people know who you are, who the face of the company is, uh, especially if you're a service provider. But I think I think in all positions, you're, people are going to see right through you. <laughs> you mm -hmm. We are um, we are being called to this deeper level of connection. And those who can't hang, I don't think they're gonna to continue to be in positions of leadership. Um, so, so there's my macro answer <laughs> to, to that. When we look at a business owner, um, business is all about relationships. And we've been saying that from the beginning, but we still have a masculine flair to that masculine energy. I'm not, I'm not, uh, when I say masculine energy, I'm not dogging men. I'm talking about yang. I'm talking about yang ways of being that we've done forever and ever. We know that business is about relationships, but we don't really fully practice that. It's like a surfacey layer of relationships. So often when a client comes to me, um, and, you know, they come to me probably because something's going on in their marriage or they want to be married. They're looking for a partner, a sole companion. And, um, and, and then we also work on their business. And some of the things that will come up if you struggle with intimacy is like, well, you don't really trust your team because there hasn't been those deeper layers of connection. Um, you haven't really uh, given space for emotion within yourself or within your team. So there's not that deeper layer of consideration. Um, you also may have situations where your clients walk away unsatisfied or you get the sense that your clients talk about you behind your back. And again, it's like, well, they don't really feel like they can come and tell you, so they're just gonna complain. And it's usually not because you didn't provide what you said you were gonna provide, it was more around how you made them feel during the experience. So, so some of these like very practical things, it's like people actually just want you. So if you're feeling like people only value me because of what I can do, 
why don't you try taking a risk and show your heart a little more and show a little bit more of who you are and actually be interested in the people that you're working with and hear a little bit about who they are and just watch how that changes things. There's some um, really neat programs out there right now that are encouraging corporations to transition to like fully autonomous. And, and I'm not going to pretend that I really understand all the inner workings of running a corporation. In my work, I don't need to because I depend on the intuition of my client. And my client, she knows exactly how to run her corporation. And especially when she taps into her intuition. But some of these programs are so cool because it's, it's like bringing this oneness and equality to all members. There is no more hierarchy. And, uh, and it's fascinating. I'm, I'm uh, working with a company right now and it's like every individual of the organization, um, you would you would be hard pressed to know which one was the CEO if you just didn't know and they all lined up and told you about the business because they all care about it at the same level. They all talk about it like they're the CEO, like it's their baby. <laughs> it's like oh, amazing. That is amazing. I, don't we all want that? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And I think too, like you mentioned with the intuitive aspect of where we're stepping into it with businesses is that it is definitely that transparency is so clear now. I mean, we're getting clear and clear on Facebook, on social media. It like, you know, you know, immediately is that, is that someone I need to work with, not work with, interact with? It's just, it's very apparent. Are you finding that also in the clients and the people you're working with? You know what? It's actually really funny you say that because no, I have not. I have mm -hmm. actually just last week wrote a post about this and have gone through this whole um, this whole awakening of recognizing how much I was allowing myself to get caught up in the smoke and mirrors uh, because they're designed to really um, beguile you. <laughs> they mm -hmm. are, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I'm working with a mentor right now who is constantly reminding me, Melissa, these tactics from these previous, especially in the online um, uh, business world, these tactics are actually abusive. And it's like you have to treat yourself like a battered wife. Once you wake up and see, oh, I've been in an abusive relationship, your tendency is to want to beat yourself up for not recognizing it sooner or not getting out sooner. And that's been the case for me. My mentor is constantly reminding me, Melissa, like these things have been designed to trick you and to manipulate you and to gaslight you so that you pull yourself away from your intuition. Um, if anything, some of this conversation almost makes it harder, in my opinion, to know the difference unless you are always like really fine tuning your intuition. Because the people are saying authenticity, they're saying connection, they're saying spirituality, but you have to pay attention to how you feel when you're with them. Um, they could be saying all the right things and yet still, and I, and I don't fault the people who are doing that for it. And probably because I have compassion, like I've been there too, but it's like, you've been trained to market a certain way. You've been trained to sell a certain way. You've been trained to, you know, uh, organize your offers and your, um, and your business a certain way. And you, and it really requires business owners to wake up and go, what is actually in alignment about the way that I'm running my business and what is not in alignment with my soul, with my being? Um, and I think, again, it behooves us to really do that work. If, if we don't do it now, we're going to get left in the dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a critical time frame right now. That's 100%. I, I agree with you. And it just seems for myself, I've also um, been around a few people on social media that I did, I was just naive and I wasn't following my intuition. But then yeah. I think back about a situation um, back in 2020 when things were happening and something came up and I was like, I just knew that is not for me. And I mm -hmm. didn't go there. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I didn't. And so, but other people did and, and masses did, and it's okay. Cause that's where they're at. Cause that's one thing I want to mention too, is that, you know, what people are at where they're at. I mean, so the person who's, you know, coming at us, trying to gaslight us or trying to, you know, ghost us or whatever by what they're offering and doing, it's where they're at. And, I, and now when I see people like that, I really recognize I know how to work with that energy because I recognize it now. So I'm getting quicker with my intuition and my understanding of how, you know, yeah. when, when something doesn't feel right, there's a reason why it doesn't feel right. 
Do you yeah. agree with me, Melissa? <laughs> yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. And and following that matters so much. I definitely have had ebbs and flows of that in my own business, running my own business of really following that intuition. And, um, you know, just yesterday I had a situation where um, like I, I would, I would assume at the end of my day, if I fell off inside, I would assume uh, all the voices in my head were true. Like it's because you're not enough or you're not doing enough or, you know, whatever your bottom line ha isn't growing enough or all those kind of, um, you know, older stories. And I sat with myself for a minute and I realized, no, it wasn't that at all. What happened was I had a babysitter lined up for my five-year-old and the babysitter didn't work out. So my daughter was just watching screens all day yesterday. And that's not to say that that's super wrong or whatever. I just knew it wasn't what I wanted, but I told myself, you can't cancel your day, just move ahead. But my heart was saying, no, like don't. And at the end of my day, I felt horrible and I could have made it mean all these things about me. Instead, I just realized, Oh, I stopped listening. I stopped listening right at the beginning of the day. And, you know, now I can go back and learn from that and do do better next time. Mm -hmm. And not be so hard on yourself, right? Totally. Because I think that's the thing is we just beat ourselves up with that. I mean, looking back at that yesterday, that's not really a big deal. I mean, in the scheme of things of life right? and all that goes on, it's like, oh, that's just not, that's not a big deal. And your daughter's not going to be scarred for life for it. It's, it's going to cool. be okay. But I totally get what you're saying, Melissa, especially with our children. It's, you know, um, yeah, it's there's a certain aspect to how we want things to look or how we want things to, you know, to fall, fall into place. And oftentimes they don't. And we have to really move with whatever we're given and, and be OK with that. So I totally feel you about that. When I think that for me, really listening to my intuition is connected to listening to my desires. And so that's where that's where it showed up for me. It wasn't really about like my daughter had the best day. She like loved watching TV all day. But it was for me, it was my heart. It was just simply being out of alignment with my heart. That was all it was. And and another day that may not have even been the case. But on this day, that was the case. And my heart did speak and I didn't listen listen. And so it's just simply like down to those kind of minute. And that's why I do the work I do. That's why people really need support with intimacy is, um, you know, we everything around us, if we're looking at the scales, the scales are tipped way out of balance. Everything is pulling us out of ourselves constantly. And, you know, the scales are way out of balance. So we need support on the other side of the scale saying the wisdom is inside of you. What do your feelings feel like about that? What does your uh, heart say about that? What do you deeply value in this situation that's missing for you? Have you consulted your guides, <laughs> right? Exactly. Like all of that, we just need that kind of support. Even I need that kind of support and I am that kind of support. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all need it, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, Melissa, let's talk a little bit about what you do offer clientele so we can, you know, share a little bit about that. I'd love to hear it and, and let my listeners know. Yeah. So I just work in a one-on-one -on -one capacity in mm -hmm. uh, high ticket, very devoted containers, supporting the individuals that I work with to access deeper intimacy in all aspects of their life. And really uh, at the end of the container feel like intimacy is one of their superpowers and they have a better understanding of their masculine and feminine energies within themselves. Um, so, so that they can expand in their business and expand in their family life and feel very fulfilled and whole in their life. Mm, beautiful. And I will have all that information in the show notes. So you can get a hold of uh, Melissa and find out how you can tap into your intimacy and have some support there and backing from her. Melissa, thank you so much. It's been so wonderful having you on today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.